This episode, we're gonna talk about speed ramping. So for this particular project, speed ramping is probably the biggest asset because of the fact that it's supposed to be this fun, dramatic B-roll footage that looks really cinematic. So the first clip is the panning around the boiling tea kettle. And what I wanna do is I wanna make it so that it starts off a little dramatic and then as it's going around to the steam part, it kind of zooms through it and you get to the next dramatic part. So you can use the speed ramp to sort of highlight really dramatic portions and then speed through sort of ancillary parts of the footage. I'm gonna right click and go to time remapping speed. So now you see this line pop up in the middle. And what that basically does is that indicates, as you can see, time remapping speed, 100%. Let's bring it up to 400%. There's that line getting shorter and shorter. That's because the clip is actually decreasing in length. Now let's watch the clip. One of the other things you can do is this pen tool. And all that does is what a pen would do. It creates marks. So if we activate the pen tool and I go through this, I want it to start off a little bit slow. And then this portion here, I want it to actually speed up until I get to there so that the steam is starting to come into my face. So I'm going to put a pen mark right there. And you see these little arrows pop up here. So I'm gonna zoom in here. So now what we can do by creating that pen tool is we've basically divided that time remapping line into two separate lines. So now I can take this part of the line, I'm gonna push it up to 600. Now if we go back to the, now if you notice right here, you see two separate lines. That's where it drops from 600% down to 100%. So let's take a look at how that looks now. And it just slowed down dramatically, right? If I take this right wedge and I drag it outward, you notice two things. Number one, you notice a ramp of speed coming up, in this case, a down ramp. But the other thing is you notice up top here, two clips show up. And it basically shows where the beginning of the wedge and the end of the wedge are actually placed based on the clip. So now if I were to play this again, it doesn't as dramatically cut down It actually ramps downward. Now we've made the whole first part of the clip at 600% speed, but I don't want it to start speeding up until right here. So I'm gonna hit the pen tool again, put another wedge. I want that, that rotation portion to be at 600%, but I want the beginning to start a little bit slowly just to start to set a mood. Now I'm going to grab this portion, drag it back down to 100%. And now you see, you have a transition from where it goes from 100% over to 600%. Grab this first part of the wedge. So I'm gonna drag this out. Now let's see how the clip looks. That's it, it was that simple. Bring each part where you want it to be with those wedges, and then you kind of stretch the wedges out to make it a little smoother, or if you want to make it sharp, you make it sharp. But that's pretty much as simple as it is. So now let's try one more thing. I'm gonna go to the next part where the cup is coming out of the cupboard. The way I set this clip up was my camera was coming out of the white cupboard door so that I could transition from the steam. And that gives you an idea of what I'm thinking when I'm filming it, right? You wanna actually think about how you're gonna transition them. I'm gonna go in here, so I'm gonna add the pen there, there, slow it down again, 200%. Bring this this way, pen there, up, 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 this one forward, put them next to each other. I'm gonna go over into my project section and click effects, go to video transitions, dissolve. That's how you use speed ramping. Um, again, not that complicated. Once you have an image in your mind, it's super intuitive. And a little while ago, I didn't know what to even ask. And as I start to do things and I start to play with things here and there, you then start to actually have concrete questions, questions that you can actually search for the answer to or try to figure the answer out by playing with it. Anyway, that was a short little video, episode two. Uh, I hope it was beneficial. I hope it's giving you even more of a feeling to maybe try this out. Maybe you can think of some idea of something really mundane, something really plain and make your own little video of it. And you don't have to use the speed ramping, you can just use the editing tool, the cutting and the transitions and just play around with it. In the next episode, what we're gonna do is adding audio. It'll give us an idea of what the audio tracks look like, playing with the sound a little bit, which I still suck at, which is a little bit tricky. And then finally at the end, we'll be adding our effects, adjusting the color a little bit. And again, like I said, 
totally not a tutorial, but I'm gonna try to show you and convey to you what I've learned so far after going from nothing. This stuff intimidated me big time before, and now it's something that's at least somewhat accessible. And I hope you get the same feeling and you go out there and you give it a shot yourself. I'll see you next time.